Hi everyone, and welcome to this tutorial bite for Oxygen Not Included, where I'm discussing mods. Like in many other games, mods are community-made content which makes changes or adds elements to the game, hopefully enhancing the experience. I'll quickly run through how to find and manage mods before I show which mods I use and briefly how each one works. The easiest way to find mods is through the Steam Workshop, and you may well be familiar with this already. To find them, open up Oxygen Not Included in your library and click on the Workshop tab. From here, you can browse by filters or tags or search for specific terms. You can also see the most popular mods from the past week, month or year, as well as the most subscribed of all time. I would definitely recommend checking these out, as these mods tend to be popular for a reason, but beware that there may be compatibility issues with older mods, or they may have already been added to the game by Clay as core game content. Once you open up a mod page, you can check out the pictures and description to work out if you want to use it, and if happy, all you have to do is hit subscribe. For the mods in Oxygen Not Included, I would group these into five different types, these being language backs, quality of life, mechanics, decor and buildings. Language packs are straightforward, but useful if you want to play in another language. Quality of life mods make the game easier to use without fundamentally changing how it works. Mechanics mods make changes to the in-game systems and behaviours, and these can be small tweaks or larger changes. Decor or visual mods add buildings or systems for decoration, or to make the game look better. And finally, building mods add in extra functional buildings which can change gameplay significantly. At this point, I'd like to highly recommend the Mod Updater mod, as it's a really simple way to control which mods are active and ensure they're all up to date. I'll note here that it's possible to install mods without using the Steam Workshop, and this can be done by finding mods from external sites such as GitHub and following the instructions. The Mods folder is found in My Documents, Clay, Oxygen is Included, Mods. Jumping into the game and into the mod menu on the main screen, the mod updater mod here lists out all the mods you're subscribed to. You can also use this screen to enable or disable them, force updates or change settings for mods that support this. And that's all there really is to it, so go out, try some and hopefully it makes your Oxygen Not Included experience more enjoyable. In this last section of the video, I will run through my own mods, which is accurate as of the time of recording. My personal philosophy with Oxygen Not Included mods is that generally I avoid building mods as I don't want to change the gameplay too much. My main focus is on quality of life mods and trying to keep the gameplay in a vanilla way but making the controls and interface easier to use. Of course, I'd encourage you to use whichever mods you enjoy, there's no right or wrong. So starting on my current mod list, the first is the mod updater itself as I previously explained, and I also use the fast save mod which I hope improves the save times which can get lengthy, especially at over a thousand cycles. I then have a couple of mods that affect alerts to clean up the game feedback. Pop-up control mods used to suppress some of the white notifications that appear when actions happen in the game, and you can enable and disable these individually. The No Longer Mutes mod simply removes the warning from the notifications at the top left, as there's usually nothing that can be done about this anyway, and is simply the result of having a large base. The No Research Alert mod stops the exclamation marks appearing when research is complete. I find this unnecessary, so I can keep track of what I've just researched and I'm already familiar with all the buildings in the game. Lastly for this group, the Suppress Notifications mod is used to hide any unwanted notifications on buildings. I typically use this to hide missing resources for ongoing tasks, like repairing Atmos suits, or for things like unpowered mechanical doors, which are intentionally left unpowered. Along a similar theme, I also have some mods that improve information given by the game. The Better Info cards groups information to reduce the number of cards shown, and controls the appearance of these cards, which is especially helpful for large piles of debris. The Geyser Calculated Average Output Tooltip mod has an extra line to the info card for analysed geysers, which is the most useful figure to have when trying to work with them. It is possible to work this out using the activity and the output information, but it makes more sense to me to have this built in. The Show Destination POI mod simply adds information to the rocket destination in the spaced out DLC when going to points of interest. Instead of showing empty space here, it will instead say the point of interest name, which is useful. My next group of mods adds useful tools that make the controls much simpler and efficient. The DGSM or Duplicant Generation Settings Manager mod allows you to find control over what duplicate interests and skills are. You can use this for every tube, including printing pods, but I only use this to customise starting tubes. For me, this simply shortcuts the process of having to re-roll many times what you want to get anyway. The bigger camera zoom out does exactly what it says on the tin and I find it invaluable. Of course, you can do this anyway, using Alt-S and zooming out, but the camera locks when zooming back in. 
I can see why this isn't included by default, as it would likely overwhelm new players, but it makes playing much easier, especially on larger maps. The Build Over Plants mod is also self-explanatory, and means you can place buildings over plants and they will be dug automatically, much like natural tiles. I find this simply speeds up planning, as you don't have to dig the plants first. The pliers mod is used to cut pipes and wires, and note that as of the time of recording, you need the pliers fixed version. Although this could be seen as a significant change to the gameplay, you can already join pipes without needing to construct them, so why not be able to split them too? It's certainly much easier to use this rather than having to deconstruct the pipes and wires, usually because of misclicks. The blueprints mod adds a lot of useful functionality to copy existing designs, and note here again that you'll need the blueprints fixed version. You can save blueprints to build, and then drop them in using the menu here. You can see I have many different types of build, all categorised by type. You can also use the snapshot tool, which is useful for doing a really quick copy and paste for the other builds around the map. Finally, the last mod I have is the wallpaper mod, which adds a decorative background building to wallpaper your base with, and the colour is dictated by the material. Obviously this is a great way to add a splash of colour to your base. So that's all for this tutorial bite about mods and oxygen not included. I hope this inspires you to check out some mods, and thanks for watching.